I go to my great grandparents uh, from Sicily, and then also the town of San Gregorio Magno, which is in southern Campania, next to Basilicata. So I'm part Sicilian, part com like Salernitano, I guess is what what you could say. Well, uh, I mean, uh, the immigration uh, situation around the turn of the 20th century affected you know a lot of people in yes. Eastern Europe, uh, Ireland. Well, before that, and, and uh, Sicilians and other Italians, uh, the culture of music, food, music uh, and language is kind of diluted out and lost. And so uh, if you weren't spoken to or heard Sicilian or Italian when you were growing up, like before you started school, yeah. how, how did it evolve into the point where you were actually learned the language and were inspired right. to go back? Well, I mean, yeah, it is interesting to like, I am like third generation. Actually, my grandmother's in the audience set up here. She, she was born in America, but she's always instilled, you know, a strong uh, pride in our, in our heritage of being Italian, being Sicilian. And so we knew little phrases in Sicilian dialect growing up and, and a few songs. So thanks to my grandma, my great uncle, my great aunts, they kind of kept that alive for us and they kept a connection with our relatives in Italy. And so when I was in college, um, I studied Italian. I, I, I did a semester in Florence. And I spent a lot of time in Sicily with our relatives there and kind of helped uh, strengthen that connection with the family. And so as I began to become closer with them, I wanted to get into the more of the culture. And because I'm a musician, I play music, I wanted to learn about the music. And so that's when I kind of discovered the folk music. And, um, I went back and I told my relatives, you know, I want to get this instrument. And they kind of looked at me like I was crazy uh, because it's such an obscure thing even there. It's kind of dying out. But um, I don't know, I just found a lot of beauty in it. And so that's, it kind of kept snowballing, you know, this whole Italian thing. Che cosa belli? What? Che cosa belli? Bellissimo. Grazie. <laughs> Any other questions? I have a, have a question. So is the, the, Italian, the uh, Sicilian dialect disappearing? So the um, fact that you have the Italian formal, uh, Italian performances. Yeah, you have the national language. Right, right. You have formal Italian, then each region has, uh, you know, its own dialect. Um, with the younger generations, they're speaking a lot more just basic Italian. Um, and a lot of it's happening in the school system. They're really encouraging the young people to only speak Italian. And they're telling, a lot of the teachers will actually tell the parents, hey, don't speak to your kids in Sicilian. But don't speak to them in dialect. Um, so the, the dialect has a stigma with it, just like the Zamponia has a stigma with it. Anything that's associated, this is my experience, now there's some other Italians in the audience, so they, if they disagree with me, you can correct me, but my experience is that anything associated with the past, with, you know, whether it's the dialect, whether it's the Zamponia or the folk music, it's sort of like they're throwing the baby out with the bathwater, because they're so obsessed with like progression and progress um, that they don't want to associate with the past, because the past is seen as poverty and peasant life. As you know, as our families, they, they immigrated to what, South America or America, they were trying to leave that behind. And so it's like they, they just wanted to forget it all. And then there's this, this stigma with the main language, you know, you want to keep you up inside where they're running. Yeah. You're right, from the earth. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, I, you know, I had to go up against a lot of that. And I, I think it was actually really interesting, interesting for them to see an American who was so interested in this. And people kind of started coming out of the woodworks. Like everyone wanted to be in the film. Like when I was there, they got really excited to, to see that America and really did appreciate this. Because within Italy, they're so used to not having people care about the culture, these musicians. Uh, and they're so used to, you know, to be kind of being kind of swept under the rug. And they see, oh, an American likes it. You know, then it's then it's like a big deal. You know, so I think people appreciated having me come there and film them. Yeah. I think when, when children are exposed to uh, a language uh, and they're bilingual up until the time they start kindergarten or first grade, they're stigmatized uh, and it's very hard to assimilate into yeah. the, cult, the present culture like in the United States and also to retain that old culture. And I, I don't think people <coughs> actually intentionally try to lose it. It's diluted out by... Well, you know, I don't know if I agree with that. I think that the government intentionally wants to dilute it. I think that it's more profitable if everyone speaks the same language for companies and corporations. You know, having all, there, there, is, there is still a very strong regionalism in Italy, and there still are strong dialects and differences there. And it, it does make a problem
for a country trying to unify. Italy is still sort of in a process of unification. And there's probably people that would much like to just rather have just one language, one monoculture, a homogenized system. But when you have cultural homogeneity, you lose these things, you lose these dialects, and you lose the poetry, and you lose the music and the different, even the Zamponia, every region, that if you notice when you watch the film, the Zamponia changes from Sicily, it's different than in Calabria, it's different than in Campania. So uh, you lose that when you have homogenization. So that's one thing I want people to kind of notice in the film, that as we become more culturally and linguistically hom hom homogenized, there's a lot to be lost. Uh, is there a question? How hard has the financial meltdown been in Italy? I think it's been a pretty bad over there, particularly in the south. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know all you know, the details, but I, the south has always been somewhat economically depressed, which is why, you know, a lot of them have come here. A lot of them moved to the north. Up but it's Rio. gotten worse. It's, it's right now. It's not good. And actually, I think the mafia is coming back more too, and they, they create a lot of problems. Now, as a musician, right? Why do you think that the music from Naples happens to be more popular in the United States than the Tarantella? Yeah, that's something, yeah, Naples has their own sort of genre of music that's different than Southern Italian folk music. I don't really cover that in the film, but they have like the Neapolitan song, it's sort of like crooner type music. For some reason that music is, has gained <coughs> popularity in, in Southern Italy and in America. It doesn't have that stigma. It's seen as more professional, I guess, whereas the Tarantella and the Zamponi, that's really seen, it's still associated with shepherds and, and farmers and peasants. So it's seen as peasant music. Um, that's, that's, I guess, what, how So what is the instrument from the original sort of piece of the Well, the Zamponia, if you want me to, I don't want to get too technical into this because it probably bore a lot of people, but the Zamponia really um, evolved from the double pipes which were played through the mouth. This is an instrument that they have found these back in the city of Ur in Iraq from 5,000 years ago. The ancient Greeks played them, the Etruscans played them. At some point they, they decided they could stick a bag onto it and it turned into a bagpipe. So this instrument, this is really an unbroken tradition going back literally thousands of years. And it's interesting to see like on this flux right now where it could die out, to see something that's lasted and evolved for thousands of years to a point where in our generation it could actually die out. It's kind of a weird thing to, to contemplate, yeah. What's the relation to the Scottish bagpipe if there is any? The Scottish bagpipe, and I don't, I'm not like a bagpipe expert totally here, but it's a much newer instrument, uh, I believe. Um, there's really not a whole lot of relation culturally. Um, they're both the reed pipes. They both have vibrating reeds in the instruments that are played through a bag. So they're both bagpipes. But the bagpipe kind of migrated from Western Asia and North Africa up through the Mediterranean and kind of moved across Europe. It's the, the guy time of Spain also. You're right. right. Spain has the bagpipe. Austria has them. Um, France has bagpipes. They're all different, very different instruments. North Africa, Western Asia, um, there's an Iranian bagpipe. Um, even India has bagpipes. Very crude, different types of instruments. Yeah. Are there any female musicians? Um, it's kind of interesting. It's still very um, patriarchal, and it's, instruments are still it's, the instruments are still very, played in very much a traditional manner. So. Um, there are really no female bagpipe players. I have never seen one. I think I saw a YouTube video with a girl that played. But um, women usually play the tambourine sometimes, or they play the castanets, or they dance, and they'll sing, maybe the guitar. But it's still very much sort of a male-dominated uh, deal. <coughs> Any other questions? Where did you go to film school? I did not go to film school, actually. I went to law school. <laughs> That's I to make a film. I, I, I worked on this film while I was in law school, my second and third years of law school. UMKC. At UMKC Law, yeah. Oh, right. Right. So, so what is your song about? Did you write it? No. I, um, <laughs> they, you know, they told me I could bring the Zamponia, but I was, I had to bring my computer up here, and I just was like, I don't want to deal with that. Trying to have some kind of concert afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I have three Zamponias. Uh, one's from Sicily, one that I, you saw me play in the film. One is from Campania, which is in San Gregorio Magno, which is the town uh, where I interviewed the shepherd and all those people. And I have another one that I got um, back in November. There's only like four or five people left still playing it. It's in like a real isolated area. So uh, kind of helping to try to revive that instrument in the area. With, there's only like a few guys left to still play it. Thank you everyone for coming.